While I was tidying up last night, I came across a bag with resistors and connectors that I originally bought a while ago to make a little resistor test box. And I got it to test the full range of resistances from 1 ohm up to 1 mega ohm. And I'll show you the inside. I was going to make a video showing how this was made, but to be honest, it turned out to be quite a time-consuming video to make because, well, a time-consuming box to make, but largely because, although it was easy to mark out the holes and uh, drill them, these connectors are quite hard to put in because they've got a very fine thread, and it's a long thread, and it took a long time and a very tight space to get those nuts screwed on. It would have been a very boring video. It would literally have been watching me screw nuts on. So it has 1% tolerance resistors, rated half watt each, and it goes from 1 ohm, uh, 10, 100 ohm, 1k, uh, 10,000 ohm, 100,000 ohm, and then it goes up to 1 mega ohm. And the 1 mega ohm resistor here, or 1 mega ohm, is a high voltage type. That's why it looks different. And the reason for that is because I'm going to use it to test meters that test uh, circuits uh, insulation. Um, at about 1,000 volts, 500 to 1,000 volts. So I wanted to be able to rate, be rated for that. I've tested it with the most accurate meter I've got, which is this Amical ST9929, and compared it to my trusty old Fluke. And I thought it'd be a good idea to do a showdown of all the meters, and we'll just test all the resistance ranges here. It's worth mentioning that although it's 1% tolerance resistors, that means that it's not quite perfect. 1 ohm does measures 1 ohm. Uh, 10 ohm is uh, 10.02, which is fine. 100 ohm, 99.5. 1 meg ohm uh, is perhaps the most... Is it the most out? 0 0.996. 1k is 1. Uh, 10k is... You know, they're they're all pretty accurate. The, uh, the values are within the sort of stated range. Let's start the test. Uh, what will we test first? Let's do the fluke, because everybody loves the fluke. The Fluke is the daddy meter. It's the one that uh, cost me a fortune when I was young. But it was uh, quite a big thing for me at the time to buy a professional meter. Oh, these uh, leads do not go in easily. This may have just gone horribly wrong so far. Maybe I should have used different leads. Let's see if it measures it anyway. Okay, it is. So the resistance, the lead resistance is low, um, according to the fluke anyway, so it's displaying zero for the shunt. The shunt was so I could null leads out. So I'll leave this one in the middle, and I'm going to go to the 1 ohm setting. It says bang on 1 ohm. 10 ohm setting, bang on 10 ohms. 100 ohm setting, 99.4. How does it actually compare? Yes, 99.5 is what I got, so that's good enough. Uh, 1,000 ohm, bang on. 10k, pretty much bang on. 100k is slightly squiff here. 99.5, how does that compare? 99.69, 99.67, yeah, it's absolutely fine. And the highest one, which is 1 mega ohm, was... 0.996, it went 0.996. So the fluke, despite its age, is still reading rock solid. I'm just going to take the exposure down a little bit here. No, that's not working. Okay, <laughs> we'll just continue then. So I shall get these tight leads out. What will we test next? So I'll put the fluke out the way. The dominometer. Uh, let's you do this one. This is the one I calibrated things out on. And it does have a null function, if I can remember how to use it here. It's quite a posh meter. It has a higher digital resolution here. So let's do it relative. I think that cancels it out. I'm not sure if this is going to lock it to the ohm range. Right, okay, I'm I may have to... Right, tell you what, we'll start off with that. So 1 ohm, it says 1.0. Well, 1 bang on, pretty much. 10 ohms, 10.03, looks good. 100 ohm, 99.5. Uh, is this going to... No, it is going to... Yeah, 1K is 1,000... Oh, that's, that's pretty damn accurate for that resistor. 10K. Yep, pretty good. 100K, 99.7. And one mega ohm, 
0.996. So that tallies up with the fluke. Okay. Righty-ho. Let's bring in the next meter. We shall choose... Um, let's do it with the Unity UT210E, which I really like this meter. It's a cute little thing. It works so well and it seems to be pretty accurate. So let's uh, try this out. Let's set it to ohms. Does it let me null out in ohms? Actually, it doesn't really matter. It's displaying pretty much zero anyway. So this is a uh, one ohm. Yep. Can you see that okay? Yes, you can. I can zoom down just a little bit, just to make it easier for those of you with uh, small screens. I shall bring this back into view here. So that's 10 ohms, 100 ohms, yep, 1000 ohms, yep, 10k, yep, 100k, yep, that's uh, close to the other measured measurements, yep, th that's spot on, absolutely fine. So UT two uh, ten e now one thing about this little meter it's the one that comes with the amazing feature of DC current clamping. Once you get used to that, once you get used to the fact that when you set it to DC current and you select DC and you get it in position, you have to null it out the zero button. It's just worth mentioning that uh, your meter isn't faulty if it displays weird values. And when you change the orientation of the meter, you have to null it out to the orientation because it is sensitive to static magnetic fields. It's a very good meter. It's a staggeringly good meter for the cost. I have given uh, a few of them out away as prizes. Let's try. Oh, is this going to fit in? No, it's not. That's a bit disturbing. Right here. This is... I'm going to have to try and do this some other way then. Are these leads different size at the different ends? No, it's not going to go in. That's annoying. Right, we'll come back to this meter then. Let's try these meters. Now, this is one that was sent in by... Just give me a second, I'll see who it was sent in by. It was sent in by Jamie. It's a, it, one from his work that was faulty. And it is faulty. In the lower range, it doesn't work. So let's stick the probes in here. The leads. And it's way off. Now, it's worth mentioning. Let's press the button here. It's supposed to be displaying zero. It's just all over the place. And the meter has failed. Uh, that This is supposed to say 10 ohms. No. 100 ohms. No, it's it's just all over the place. I don't know if it's just bad connection or, or or whatever. However, what is interesting is I can now switch this to the high voltage range. So we'll switch up to the high voltage range, and this time it should measure one mega ohm. And it's getting 0 0.99, which is absolutely perfect. So the meter has gone off on its... Uh, that was testing at 500 volts. The, the meter has gone off in its uh, continuity testing and that it's been failed for that. There's a sort of label on it saying that, you know, it's been tested. There's a thing in the UK that you have to send meters off if you're in the electrical industry. It's part of the whole part P scam that you have to send them off on a regular basis and have them calibrated. What they actually do is they plug them into something similar to this and they just give it a yes, no. Did it display the correct resistance? Did it test the correct voltage? It's just a basic test and it either passes or fails. I used to think that calibration was like actually fine tuning it, but it's not. It's a simple yes, no sort of test. Let's put this out of the way. Let's bring my own socket and C tester in. And we can do the full range of tests on this one. So we'll plug in here. Let's do continuity first. So I'll turn it on. And we'll select continuity. I shall null the leads out. And what it's done there, it's, it's measured the resistance of the leads and has nulled them out. So if I press test now, it should be pretty much zero. Yes, it is. If I put this in on continuity and press it now, it's displaying 1 for 1 ohm, yep. How about 10 ohm? 10 ohm. Bang on. 100 ohm. 
99.4 in this case. And it's it's over range. It's not going to get the 1K because it just detects it's above its 999 ohm range. Because the continuity testers, all they're doing is testing for continuity of wires and giving you an indication of the resistance of circuits. So anything above 999 ohms for continuity would be rogue anyway. So if I now go to insulation mode, and it's currently set for 500 volts, press test, 1 meg ohm. Just out of interest, let's test it at a thousand volts, one meg ohm, and at 250 volts, one meg ohm. So this thing is absolutely measuring fine. And I have to say, if you really know how to use your equipment, you'll automatically just know if your meter is reading out. If you're getting Rogue readings, you'll just intuitively know they're wrong, and you could, you'd could you automatically get another meter and check it. I'm guessing the calibration thing that you have to keep sending away, apart from being part of the Part P scam, is also to compensate for the fact that so many people are now classed as electricians who have no natural understanding of being able to detect if meters are rogue. Yeah, sore subject. Right, give me a moment. I'm going to find a set of leads to put in here, so just give me a second. I have the leads that were supplied with it. This is, of course, a sort of budgety hobby meter. It's quite nice. This one comes with a holster. I've mentioned CPC a few times in recent videos. This, I included it with an order from CPC, but I do have others, including the one I normally use down here. I'll test that as well. You know, we might as well test them all. So let's turn this to 200 ohms. And there's no facility to null out the leads, so they're going to only really going to be critical at low resistance. So if I bridge them out, it's about... 0.3. So the 1 ohm range should be 1.3? Yeah. 10.3 perhaps? Uh, and at the sort of 100 ohm, the 0.3 is starting to get sort of negligible anyway, so that's 100 ohms. Uh, I'll have to switch. Now I'm going up to 1000 ohms, I'm going to have to switch up to the 2000 ohm range to cover that, because it's above the 200 ohms range, so that's pretty good. 20k range to cover up to 10k. Doesn't matter which way around these leads go. Bang on. Uh, 200k to cover up to the 100k resistance. Uh, pretty good. Uh, what was that? Let's, I was, I'm rushing, I'm getting distracted here. About, say, near enough 99 ohms. Yep, that's fine. And the 1 meg ohm. What's it going to get? Bit bouncy, but uh, yeah, it's it's good enough. Okay, let's get the little meter I normally use. Let's see what it's like for uh, measuring resistance. This one has its little well-worn and actually quite faded leads. Oh, actually, I'm going to have to change them because they got the crocodile clips in the end and there's no chance of getting them down. Let's see if these even fit. Uh, I think they fit. Let's find out if it works. Not sure if they're going in properly or not. We'll find out. Yes, they are. Right, okay. Let's test this little meter. Yeah, about 0 0.6, 0 0.5 for the lead, so I'd guess 1.5 for this point. Yep, there, there'll be that sort of low end sort of contact resistance. Yep, that's fine. 100-ish. Fine. You know, this is well within the sort of tolerance you'd expect of these meters. It's actually really impressive. A lot of that must be down to the chip itself. So that's about 1,000 ohms. It's coming up 997. Okay. Uh, 10,000 ohms. 9.98 is absolutely fine. Up to the 200k range, the 100,000 ohms. 99.1, it's, it's fine. And then the Meg Ohm. That's not excellent, but you know, it's acceptable for that sort of resistance range. It, it's, it'll do, but it's not what I'd call fantastic, but it is kind of a quite a high resistance to be measuring. So I would say, uh, is, are there any other meters? I, I can't really, oh yes, there is. Let's test this one. This is a, I can zoom out for this because this is a big meter. This is a TAC Life. It's a sort of generic brand again. 
let's uh, shuffle leads here and make sure I keep the right leads with the right meters. This one's uh, kind of fatiguing there as well. Maybe it needs new leads or maybe it just needs replaced. I hate to say it, it would probably be cheaper to buy a complete new meter than it would be to buy leads for those because they are cheap. This one comes out of our holster, which makes me want to drop it for some reason to see how well it lasts. I'd be more comfortable dropping that one in its rubber holster than dropping my actual fluke in its rubber holster. Because there's a somewhat huge price difference. Okay. Tack life. Into the common connection, into the uh, capacitance, diode, continuity, degrees, let's get just everything, other connection. Let's turn it round to 600 ohm, it's quite an odd thing. This is an odd, it's got a light that if you press the button, it doesn't just light the screen, but it also lights a light in the back as well. Not a super mega bright light, but good enough. I should turn that back off. So the tack life with continuity, I don't think it's got the null option here. No, but it's it's showing about, yeah, it's quite low, 0.1 ohm. So this should be round about 1 ohm. That's fine. 10 ohms. Yep. 100 ohm. Yeah, that's all right. 1000 ohm. I'm going to have to switch up to the 6000 ohm range here. 0.99. That's, that's fine. 10,000 ohms. We're going to have to switch up to 60,000 range here. Oh, that looks very respectable. Uh, up to the 600,000 ohm range, the 100k, 99.5, that's fine. And up to 6 meg ohm for the 1 meg ohm range. And that's absolutely fine. All these meters are performing really well. It must just be down to mass production and the use of dedicated meter chips that are accurate in the first place. It's very good results. And nice to see that the socket and C tester... Uh, is also providing good results when it's on its continuity test, when it's measuring at high voltage and uh, it's getting that nice rock solid one meg ohm in that resistor. So yeah, that's a very handy device. I shall put the back in this now and uh, test other meters of this in future. I do tend to, I do plan, intend to get a load of meters together and do a range of voltage and resistance and, well, I've done the resistance now, uh, voltage and current tests and see how accurately they perform. But uh, so far with resistance, even the most basic meter has proved to be very, very good. So that's a good result, I'd say. And this is going to be a very useful device indeed.